Hi everybody, Miss Becky here from the Upper Marion Township Library. I'm here with you again on another Tuesday afternoon to do a little more book talking. So talking just a little bit about some great books for elementary and middle school students. I've got four that I'm going to share with you today. Um, before we get started into some of the titles, I just want to remind you that all of the books that we're sharing here are available on our Overdrive account which is access to our ebook and audiobook collection. So if you have um, your library card number, you can get onto Overdrive either through the library's website or using the app called Libby. And you can search for these books or any other books that you might be interested in reading or listening to. Um, just like regular physical books, if one is checked out to somebody else already, there will be a hold on it. Um, so you can put in a hold request, get put on the waiting list, and then as soon as they're done with it, then um, it will go to the next person in line, just like it normally would with a book at the library. Um, and the checkout period is two weeks, so it's a little bit less than what we normally do. So if you do get put on a waiting list, um, you may see a copy sooner than, than you'd expect, depending on how many libraries in the county have it and how many people have requested it. But there's still lots of stuff that are available right now. So if you go check that out, you can see a whole bunch of different recommendations and books for all ages, everything from picture books for younger kids, um, elementary school reads, uh, easy readers, middle school, YA, adult novels, nonfiction, um, a little bit of everything. So let's get started, and today we are going to talk about a few different books. The first one I have here is called Full of Beans by Jennifer Holm, and this one is an interesting, uh, about, I would say, middle grade, um, early middle school, the elementary school is a good age for this one. Um, it is a companion book to the title um, Turtle in Paradise, if you've heard about that one at all, or if you've ever read that. You don't have to read this first or that one first. You can read them in either order, really, but um, they kind of go together. They're about the same characters, though not the same events. So it's a good companion book. And I'm going to read a little description of what the book is about. So... Grown-ups lie. That's one truth Beans knows for sure. He and his gang know how to spot a whopper a mile away because they are the savviest bunch of barefoot conches, that means locals, in all of Key West. Not that Beans really minds. It's 1934, the middle of the Great Depression. With no jobs on the island and no money anywhere, who can really blame the grown-ups for telling a few tales? Besides, Beans isn't anyone's fool. In fact, he has plans. Big plans, and the consequences might surprise even Beans himself. So this is a cool one because it is a historical fiction novel. Like um, it said in the description that um, that it takes place in 1934 during the Great Depression in Key West, um, which is a really interesting setting because it's um, Key West is a very tourist town. They're very uh, dedicated to tourists. And obviously tourism is something that was not doing so well in the Great Depression. So the town really struggled a lot. So it's really interesting to learn a little bit about what's going on there. And also the characters are really good. Beans is a really interesting character and his friends and the other people that you meet in the story. Um, really interesting. So I recommend this one. Um, and if you like this, you can also read um, Turtle in Paradise, which is good too. And um, one thing that I will also add and mention is that I love to read these books, even though I don't have kids, even when I'm not doing it for work, because I really like middle grade books. I think a lot of them are very well written and are great reads for any age, honestly, especially the next one that I'm going to talk about. I think there's a lot that you can get out of it um, as an adult or as anybody. It's called Alan Cole is Not a Coward. Um, this is a middle grade title. So let me read you the description. Alan Cole is not a coward, right? He can't stand up to his cruel brother Nathan. He can't escape the wrath of his demanding father who thinks he's about as exceptional as a goldfish. And, scariest of all, he can't let the cute boy across the cafeteria know he has a crush on him. But when Nathan discovers Alan's secret, his older brother announces a high-stakes round of Cole versus Cole. Each brother must complete seven nearly impossible tasks— Whoever finishes the most wins the game. 
If Alan doesn't want to be outed to all of Evergreen Middle School, he's got to become the most well-known kid in school, get his first kiss, and stand up to dad. And all with the help of only two friends even less cool than he is. Giving up is for cowards, and Alan's determined to prove to Nathan, to the world, to himself, that this goldfish can learn to swim. May the best coal win. And so this was a really um, good book about kind of growing up, um, main character who feels obviously afraid of a lot of things, really comes into himself throughout the novel, learns a lot about um, himself. And there's a lot of very interesting like relationship and family dynamics, both with his older brother who picks on him and his dad who kind of picks on both of them. Um, so kind of a lot going on here, um, coming of age type story, but really, really well written. Um, Great story, great characters, great writing, um, and relatable in a lot of ways because it deals with a lot of issues, especially for middle school students kind of dealing with that being in middle school thing. Um, another cool thing about this book, it's written by Eric Bell, and he is a local author. I believe he's from Ambler. He's from somewhere not too far um, from the area. So kind of cool to also support a local author here. And... Um, the other thing is a sequel to this book was just published called Alan Cole Doesn't Dance. So I have a feeling that one's going to be really good too. I haven't read it yet, but I have a copy of it and it's on my pile um, to read in my free time now. Um, so hopefully I'll get to that soon and I'm excited for it because I really enjoyed this one. So I definitely recommend um, Alan Cole is Not a Coward, especially if you do kind of like that local feel. Um, even though Evergreen Middle School is not a real school that they go to, it's very much based on like the middle schools and the small suburban Philadelphia towns around here, since that's what the author grew up with. So it may feel a little familiar, too, as you're reading it. Um, so that is an excellent book. Okay, the next one I have here is a classic. You can tell how old it looks because this is actually my copy from when I was a child growing up. But this is Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. This is a great choice for elementary school students. Um, the main character is in fourth grade, so um, relatable for that grade. But um, good readers in second, third grade could read and enjoy this too. And honestly, it's just a good book for all ages, especially even adults who maybe want to take a little walk down memory lane. So let me read you the description here. Any fourth grader would agree that Peter Hatcher has a terrible problem, his little brother, Fudge. But the grown-ups in his life just can't see that there is something wrong with a two-year-old who breaks his front teeth trying to fly, decides that he is a dog, goes on a no-eat strike, and scribbles all over his brother's homework. Peter is always asked to perform so that Fudge will be less of a terror, like standing on his head so that Fudge will laugh, opening his mouth for his mother to pop food into, or convincing Fudge that pedaling a toddle bike is fun so that he'll ride it for a TV commercial. But Peter feels unappreciated, and he's finding his brother harder and harder to take. When Fudge gets at his pet turtle dribble, that is, that is the living end. What happens next and how Peter's parents save the day make for a mixture of hilarity and a little more understanding on everyone's part. All right, so this book is also a good choice for any kids who maybe have an annoying younger brother or younger sibling that they could definitely relate to. Um... It's very funny. Got a lot of funny moments, um, especially with all the crazy things that the little brother gets into and how Peter has to deal with them. Um, the bit that they talk about with the turtle is one of the most memorable scenes I remember reading from a children's book from my own childhood. Um, definitely have still some uh memories of, of reading that for the first time. I won't say anything to spoil it if you haven't read it yet, um, but hopefully now maybe you're a little bit curious if you haven't and you will give it a read to see what happens. So um, this one also has a number of sequels that came after it. Um, it's the, the little brother whose name is Fudge. They called them the Fudge series, so there's other Fudge books as well. Um, 
super fudge, fudgemania. I think there's at least like five or six uh, fudge books. So if you enjoy this one and like the character, um, the characters in here, you can find some other great reads to go on after this that um, I believe all of them, or at least most of them are available on Overdrive in our ebook collection. All right, one more book that I'm going to talk about today, and this one is another favorite of mine from um, my childhood, and that is Holes by Lewis Sacker. Um, now, if you had been tuning in the past few weeks to our reading of Sideways Stories from Wayside School, you might recognize the author's name. Um, he wrote those books, and then he wrote this book, which many people now know because it did win the Newbery Award. Um, it also was made into a movie, so um, lots of good uh praise and, and stuff like that that this book has received. But um, let me read you the description first, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So, Stanley Yelnats is under a curse, a curse that began with his no good, dirty, rotten, pig stealing great great grandfather and has since followed generations of Yelnats. Now Stanley has been unjustly sent to a boys' detention center, Camp Greenlake, where the warden makes the boys build character by spending all day every day digging holes, five feet wide and five feet deep. It doesn't take long for Stanley to realize there's more than character improvement going on at Camp Greenlake. The boys are digging holes because the warden is looking for something. Stanley tries to dig up the truth in this inventive and darkly humorous tale of crime and punishment and redemption. All right. So one of the things that I really enjoy about this book is that it has the comedic um, style of Lewis Sacker. Uh, if you listen to the Wayside School stories, you know that it's pretty absurd, his uh, comedy. And you get that same sort of absurd uh, funny moments in this book as well. A lot of things that are just kind of crazy, but and super silly. Um, but at the same time, that comedy is weaved into this really interesting story. Um, it's a little bit of a mystery almost, it feels like, because you're trying to figure out why are the boys digging all these holes? What is going on here? What is the purpose of that? And in addition to that, it's also combined with um, some flashback scenes that have to ultimately do with why all of this is happening, but we learn a little bit about the history of the town and some things that were going on there um, through a series of flashbacks. Everything's just written really well, tied in together um, into what makes it a really excellent story um, for just not at all what you expect to read and kind of a unique book in that sense that there's not a lot of other books like kind of written like the same sort of style and the same sort of feel. Um, so Again, if you haven't read it, highly recommend it um, because it is a really, really good one. Um, so, and uh, age-wise, again, this one kind of falls kind of in the middle of that, um, like, late elementary, early middle school age, um, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, all great um, ages. But, again, it's good. I, I now, after <laughs> talking about it and reading about it again, I kind of want to go back and reread this one because it's been a little bit of a while since I read it. Um, so another really excellent book. So I hope some of those sounded interesting to you today. If you do end up reading any of the ones that we talk about or recommend here on our um, book talks, let me know. I love to hear, even if you didn't like it, if you read it and say, hey, Miss Becky, I read that book and I hated it. Um, tell me that too, because I like to hear what you think about um, what books you read, what you're reading. And um, join us on Thursday. Miss Laura will be doing some more book talks at 2 o'clock on Thursday. And I will be doing a story time with picture books for the younger kids tomorrow morning, Wednesday at 1030. So I will see everybody back tomorrow morning. Um, thanks for joining us. And hopefully you find some good books to read for the next few weeks. Bye.